海を越えてきてくださった皆様、ご対応のところ、ご出席いただいた皆様、このフォーラムを開催するにあたって、さまざまな場面で私たちを助けてくださった方々、ありがとうございます。今日の司会を担当いたしますのは村田、小笠原、中島ですどうぞよろしくお願いいたしますし各チームには7分間のプレゼンテーションをする権利が保障されていますプレゼンテーションは7分以内になっても構いません各プレゼンテーションが終わった後次のプレゼンを担当する人たちが4つの会場の間を移動することとなっていますスムーズに進行するよう皆さんのご協力よろしくお願いいたしますではただいまからプレゼン1を始めますガーナ共和国チームの皆さんお願いいたしますチームガーナ please start Good morning, everybody.、Uh, I'm Beatrice a t a k a r a b e d i a k o from Ghana,、uh, presenting on the topic of challenges of a sustainable society, issues of human rights in Ghana.、Yeah. Ghana stretches more than 300, yeah, 330 miles along West Africa's southern coast. Lowlands、uh, run through the south central area, while a tropical forest area extends along its western border. And Lake Volta, the world's largest man made lake, covers nearly 3,300 square miles in the east. Adult literacy rate in Ghana was 71.5% in 2010, with males at 78.3% and females at、uh, 65.3%. Basic education ends at the junior high in Ghana. ASP Net in Ghana. Ghana joined ASP in 1961, and ASP has over 100 schools as members in Ghana. ASP has Ghana focuses its activities on peace, intercultural learning, human rights, and environment. ASP Net schools are found in the basic level, while UNESCO clubs are at the senior high level. Flagship projects include participating in celebration of UN and UNESCO International Days, essay and art competitions, TSDS, and ESD projects. Some ESD challenges. One,、uh, religious intolerance and freedom, and freedom of opinion of expression. Three, freedom of peaceful assembly and s o c i a l i z a t i o n Four, environmental degradation. Now, on human rights, a former president of Ghana, John a j e k u m k u f o once said that our continent is plugged with divisiveness, tribalism, religious intolerance, coupled with cruelty towards the vulnerable in society, especially women. He admonished that our leadership should learn and leave themselves over and above pettiness like that. Once you become a leader of a nation, you should know that you are there for the people of the nation. The intolerance has led to the existence of Boko Haram in the West Africa, where about 200 girls had been kidnapped in Nigeria and other ethnic disturbances scattered over Africa. Yeah, ESD success stories, achievements in Ghana. Religious tolerance and freedom. As a purely Christian mission school founded on the principles and values, Of the Presbyterianism in the Presbyterian Senior High School, b e c h e m in Ghana, has given equal p l a t f o r m of worship to students of other faiths, especially Muslims. A place of worship has been built on campus, and meals are sent on their own request during their Ramadan season. And also, freedom of opinion and expression. Students have been empowered to be confident and express their views without fear or being intimidated by a teacher or a student. UNESCO Club has created a unique and harmonious platform、uh, for students and teachers to collaborate and tolerate each other and also to even understand each other in divergent issues.、Yeah. And also, freedom of peaceful assembly 
and association. Being part of ASP NESCO and due to the various platform created by UNESCO Club in my school, they, um, they meet once a week without interruption to discuss matters of concern. These smaller groups make dissemination of information very easy in the school and also students with challenges, especially financially, are assisted at that level, which gives them free mind to do academic work. And environmental sustainability. Okay. How the human, how the environment control man in Ghana. Farming in Ghana has rain fed uh, challenges. Relief features in Ghana continue to make transportation difficult. A heavy downpour renders workplaces inaccessible. Inability to tap solar and wind energy in Ghana. Inability to cultivate in savanna areas, which take larger portion of our land. Inability to control natural disasters, especially floods in Ghana. And these are examples of it. Inability to control the environment, which leads to a very degradable society in Ghana. Uh, you can see from the roads that the truck finds it very difficult to cross uh, with the land. Look at the structure of the land. So it's very difficult when this situation is in. The car really finds uh, very difficult to come and cross the road. An example to in our waters, when there is flood, flood, they can't cross the road, they can't walk along the way because there is flood all over. And also with the other one, uh, not good spillage environment, so they won't find uh, a spacious place enough to walk. So you find this things in Ghana sometimes when the environment controls man in Ghana. So the reverse situation, environmental degradation is a story behind it. It has been observed that the indigenous is central voter around that area, they intentionally set fire because of uh, various cultural uh, processes which helps also in farming. And unintentionally, the land is being built and the practices continued for about a month without any intervention. What is difficult is that these farmers set the fire in the forest at night, making it difficult for forest guards to trace. It has seriously affected soil fertility in Ghana. That is the bush burning. Okay, it has observed that if we are able to imbibe in as a culture of tolerance, irrespective of race, creed, gender, etc., people with harmonious coexistence with nature, we would make a better world place for posterity. Thank you. In Ghana, it's Medasi. Thank you very much, Team Ghana.次は
準備ができましたのでただいまからデンマーク王国チームによるプレゼン2を始めますデンマーク王国チームの皆さんお願いいたしますチームデンマーク Please start Hello、um, We are all from Denmark at Roskilde Gymnasium the same、uh, We all come from the same school Yes, um, I'm Ida and I'm 19 years old.、Um, and I'm very glad to be here because、um, I believe that we can make a difference、uh, across cultures and countries. And I'm Frederick and I'm 18 years of age. And I'm also very glad to be here at the ESD conference 2014 to expand my horizon. And I'm Emily, and I'm 17 years old, and I'm also very glad to be here.、Uh, I have an interest in the environment because I think it's our duty as humans on the earth because、um, we use, destroy, and live on the earth.、Um, yeah, so we have, to take,、uh, we have to care about the earth and take care of it. And because in Denmark, we meet a lot of people、um, who is n t really interested in taking care of the environment because they say it's not really something. They care about, and it's not really an interest, and we really want to change that because it's something you have to care about. It's not a choice, really. And I'm Oliver, and I'm also 18 years old,、uh, and I'm personally interested in doing something for the environment、uh, because I think it's necessary that we act now. So, Denmark is、uh, in Europe, and、uh, our school is in Europe. And、uh, it's in Denmark, right here.、Um, yeah,、uh, we, well, our school is,、uh, our city is called Roskilde. It's about 30 kilometers away from Copenhagen, our capital city. Denmark is、uh, a country with 5.5 million inhabitants, and it's very cold. We have a welfare state, which, which means that.、Uh, We can't really feel much of the environment、uh, changes. It's not really something that strikes us, which means that we have to、uh, have a bigger focus on, uh, yeah, on uh, the environment and getting the people to feel the environment that it's, it's actually changing. Yes, and we are all for part of the Green School Council at our gymnasium, and that means that we are taking part of. Uh, making some activities at the school, which has the purpose to inform the other students、um, about sustainability and,、um, and hopefully that will make them、uh, the school more environment, environmentally friendly and、uh, the students will go home and, be,、um, and their minds will be affected so they will be、uh, good citizens on, in a future. In the future, yes. <laughs>、um, the, major in this, in the mayor in our city,、uh, in Roskilde, donated 10,000 crowns、uh, to a green party, which is、uh, equivalent to just around 2,000 US dollars. And、uh, at that green party,、um, we spent the money on CO2 neutral、uh, vegetarian food. And、uh, bicycles that generate、uh, electri electricity for recharging your phone. And、uh, yeah, we had a great time、uh, doing a green party instead of just a normal party. And also, we do an event called、uh, Bute to Nut, which is like an event where ev students can bring their old clothes and trade it for new clothes、uh, without having to buy new clothes, which will Uh, increase the emission of greenhouse gases. Um, yeah, and after our theme week, week, Green Week, on our school, a journalist showed interest.、Um, so he interviewed us for Rasculus local newspaper,、uh, the article you can see to the left.、Um, and in the article, we talk about the, the Green Week, which had its, its focus on food waste. And after the article got printed、uh, in the newspaper, the local news channel also、um, asked us if, we, if they could interview us.、Uh, so, of course, we said yes, and it's on the right. You can see a picture of the interview. 
and so it got showed on the local news channel and also it got uploaded to YouTube. Uh, and also we had a cooperation with uh, Roskilde C City uh, to uh, inform the citizens of the city and also the students at our gymnasium to probably get rid of batteries in the city by putting them in these special kind of green containers. And on the picture you see us doing a sort of flash mob uh, in December last year uh, where we had a, a battery song, which we won't be singing today, unfortunately. And also, each week after Easter, we have a theme week where we choose a topic within sustainability, which then will be implemented in the school's education for this week. Uh, and last year, we chose food waste. Um, and on the picture, you see Selina Juhl, which is like the president of Denmark's biggest organization against food waste. So we inform the students on how to reduce their food waste um, in their everyday lives. Uh, and also we arranged some activities for the students and one of the activities was to they should we um, ask them to bring their leftovers to school so they could make a buffet for their own class uh, and it was really successful in a lot of the classes they still do it even though it's not a theme week anymore uh, some students in our school uh, also made a little garden where they are planting herbs and uh, carrots uh, these can be used in the canteen or just uh, as a little snack in the break and it's in our garden close to the rector's control. Yes, and as you can see <laughs> we have uh, done some activities to change the minds of our students at the school and we hope that they will um, take this part of the, uh, the thinking about the environment with them um, and um, but we also, we can see, <laughs> oh sorry, <laughs> okay, I will just end it and say that we are, yes, we try to do some environmental, I mean, environment work at our school and at last we will just thank you all for being here, yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Team Denmark. Next is Pakistan Islam Presentation 3. Presentation三です。発表の準備のある
準備ができましたのでただいまからパキスタンイスラム共和国チームによるプレゼンさんを始めますパキスタンイスラム共和国チームの皆さんお願いいたしますチームパキスタン Please start Good morning my name is Khadija and I'm from、uh, Pakistan my、uh, My school is one of the ASP Net schools, Grammar School, Rawal Pindi.、Uh, these are my teammates. Hello, my name is Michal Malik. My name is Shadzman. Hello, good morning. My name is Abdul Wahid. We're all from different schools, but our schools are a part of the ASP Net club. So,、um, this is,、uh, we worked.、Um, You know, we're all here to attend the ESD conference, and、um, sustainability are, is a very serious issue we're facing right now. The environment, we all live on the earth, and we all need to take care of it. It's, all, it's a part of us. And,、uh, well, while some people, we need to aware people about it. So,、uh, some of the general challenges that we're facing in Pakistan、um, was we. Had a cleanliness campaign from our school. We did a cleanliness campaign on a more personal level,、uh, on a smaller scale. I was a part of that、uh, campaign. The general challenges we're facing in Pakistan are migrations from rural areas and those from areas troubled by extremism and other natural calamities. Are taking place to,、uh, those people are, taking place to ma- t- are migrating to major urban areas. Due to which urban populations, are,、uh, urban populations are growing, the cities cannot bear this civic burden. Developing countries like Pakistan lack resources to deal with these multiple challenges facing them. So,、uh, this is the, that's the plot, that's the plot、uh, we worked on. It was right next to our school. And this is、uh, when we worked on it. We collected money, we funded, and we went to, from house to house, from door to door, talking to people, telling them about our、um, project, and asking them to help us, to support us in this cause. And that's what we achieved.、Um, this, is, we, this thought came,、uh, came to us to clean the plot right next to our、uh, house. Right next to our school, because we,、uh, the general challenge is relating to cleanliness, which、uh, is gar- garbage is found lying in places that are visible to passers by. It becomes a serious case of diseases and illness. This not being, the plot's not being clean. The smell becomes offensive. Garbage bins are not found everywhere, due to which people throw garbage wherever they find convenient. Sites such as that of garbage lying in the open leads to depression. Now, that open plot of land is adjacent to our school and was n- being used by the people of our area as our garbage dumping site. You, see, you would see animals、uh, moving around looking for stale food. Students and the staff had to pass by it, and it was not a very good, a good image of our school either. And not a very pleasant sight to start your day with. So,、uh, this is what we came up with. We discussed about the、uh, garbage site in our school morning assembly. Then we worked collectively with the staff, the school,、uh, everybody, and we collected funds. That was, we collected from the school, and then we went around in the community. Then we hired mechanized means to collect the garbage.、Uh, and We ourselves, the students, then went to that plot to clean the remnants, you know, as taking a part of it, being a part of it. Then we brought in soil and grew vegetables. A fence was built around the plot in order to keep,、uh, and then a committee was formed as well to look after its maintenance. So, this is something we did on a personal level. Now, on a larger level, Pakistan is facing challenges in agriculture. Agriculture is the mainstay of Pakistan's economy. Over 80% of our labor is involved in agriculture, and over 50% of our products are agriculture based products. 
Farming is done on small and large holdings, mostly by agricultural workers in rural areas. But again, one of the most serious problems, which, which is the main source of other problems, is uh, the rapid growth of population. Pakistan has the sixth largest population in the world. Pakistani farmers lack knowledge and technical training. They do not have the modern scientific methods of uh, farming or irrigation. To feed this rapidly growing population, agricultural land is used over and over again, reducing the nutrients of the soil, and due to which the uh, per acre yield is low. Pakistan is now becoming a food insecure country. May the main problem we are facing was that we were facing was the use of chemical fertilizer. Chemical fertilizers are used to replenish the nutrient poor soil. These fertilizers are expensive for the farmer and they have to take loans from the banks due to which they pass their lives in indebtedness. These chemical fertilizers are not environment friendly and they ruin the soil and deprive it of its nutrients. Pesticides and insecticides are used to eliminate pests and weeds which are along with the chemical fertilizer harmful for the soil. One of the main solutions that we came up with on a national level for, this, for the use of chemical fertilizer was to practice balanced fertilization, adding not too much of the fertilizer and not too less. However, Dr. Teru Higa from a university in Okinawa, Japan, uh, discovered a yeast-based fertilizer, not, uh, not uh, all very environment friendly. The University of Agriculture in, in Faisalabad, Pakistan, picked up this research uh, and used it to, uh, to do the, used it for their own self, and they modified it and then make, made made use of, use of it for us. The approach was to enhance soil, soil fertility by improving its physical, biological, and chemical properties. After 10 years of experiments and training, thousands of farmers in Pakistan put up fermenters where, they, where, they, uh, where the uh, yeast-based fertilizer was formed and was uh, taken through pipes um, along with the water and due to which no labor was required to, um, to put the fertilizer or irrigate the land anymore. Farmers using this method of fertilization are now debt free and growing crops, fruits and vegetables on renewed soil. However, this practice of um, yeast based fertilizer is not being practiced all over Pakistan. So, however, um, we need a solution on how we can make it, make it more, um, make people aware more about this. Lastly, one of the major problems that we're facing in the world is water availability and now Pakistan. Pakistan, due to being an agricultural country, requires a constant supply of water throughout the year. The water that is available is derived not only from the rain, but also from our major rivers, um, uh, which are forming the largest river system in the world. Last, well, again, one of the main uh, problems that we're facing is the uh, high rate of population. Population growth rate is high, so the demand for water is greater than the availability. Due to the global climate change, available water keeps varying, it's not constant. Rainfall patterns are erratic. Most of the rivers do not have their sources in Pakistan, due to which water availability is not on demand due to the dams built upstream by our neighboring country. Since the water in the rivers come from the mountains, the dams and barrages and canals that are used for irrigation, irrigation tend to silt up, reducing its capacity. Due to these reasons, floods occur periodically in various parts of Pakistan, bringing havoc into the lives of millions of people and allowing a huge amount of water to be wasted. Other than the shortage of water, there is a shortage of clean drinking water. 
clean drinking water is not available for 60 to 70 percent of our population. Only 15 percent of water in the country cities goes through pipes. The underground water table falls rapidly during the dry season. Rural populations get drinking water from, uh, which is not clean from ponds or streams, wells or springs. Much water during rains and floods is wasted as it is allowed to flow into the sea rather than, rather than being stored and being used for other purposes. The solutions that we came up with was to set up filtration plants in several cities. However, this is not uh, yet very popular. Communities are being trained by NGOs to do rainwater harvesting. So rainwater harvesting is basically collect, making use of large containers to, to collect rainwater from rooftops. Rainwater is, um, uh, people think that rainwater is not healthy for drinking. However, rainwater is the healthiest water for drinking. A number of traditional water and rainwater, uh, rainwater harvesting techniques are now being used throughout Pakistan. In the mountain areas of Chitral, Gilgit, and Bal Baltistan are northern areas. Two strategies are being used to save and economize on water. A diversion system in which a long channel is built against the mountain side, collecting flood water and is then diverted to the cultivated areas. And a dam system in which lar a large reservoir is filled with excessive flood water, which is then pumped through pipes to the crops. However, the dam system is not very um, open to all the, all the countries or all the farms, all, all the cities or all the farms. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Team Pakistan. Tsugiwa,Hai
準備ができましたのでただいまから配置共和国チームによるプレゼン4を始めます配置共和国チームの皆さんお願いいたしますティム・ヘイリーブリースタート Good morning ladies and gentlemen It's a great pleasure for us Asian to take part in this event regarding challenges for sustainable development Let me introduce our team We have Esther Dattin Paul, Jacob Joseph, and Yamila d e v a l o n We are from Haiti. Um, the,、uh, the Republic of Haiti is located on the Caribbean Sea, near Central America, next to Cuba, Jamaica, and Dominican Republic. Here is the Asian a i r s m e a t in action. It's about our Yof National Forum 2000, 2013 in p e n t e a s u Uh, this forum、uh, helped to unite、uh, people in the rural zone and、uh, urban zone. As major, as major challenges in our country, we identify rehabilitation of our environment, the biggest one. Here in the first photo, we can remark our teacher, Mr. Nimowak, planting trees. And secondly, we are building resilience to natural hazards. There we have the floods that we have in Taba, next to our capital. And after, we are preserving our, world, our heritage. There is the Citadel h e n r i our world heritage in Haiti. And after, we have quality of education for all. There is our school, College de Coplage, where we, provide, where we try to provide quality of education for all. To rehabilitate, to rehabilitate our environment, we must face deforestation, erosion. It's a very big issue. The photo talks by, il by itself. We have a minimum of forest cover. When winds come, gullies from topsoil g o e s to the rivers and then to the sea. This problem, due to the poverty, lack of education, land use mismanage mismanagement, bad agricultural practices. As consequences of deforestation, we have poverty, migration, deadly disaster, biodiversity, erosion, water issues, degraded environments, and ecological disasters. Good practices are challenged in AED. So, as the SPNET, as the SPNET we practice with difficulties. Ecological exclusions, training, awareness, true nurseries. This photo shows our e a r t h q u a k e in action.、Uh, learning to keep our environment safe is a very big deal. Reforestation is central to sustainable development. Reforestation is critical to reduce poverty, to create sustainable livelihoods, and to help communities to adapt to climate change. Here s the p u p i l and the teacher are planting trees. A big challenge after reforestation is building resilience to natural hazards. We face all types of hazards in AED, like hurricanes, rains, and storms. In 2008, AED faced four hurricanes in three weeks. Floods, tsunami, cause also big dangers in AED. Floods every, we have in AED floods every single year. And we have an earthquake. In 2010, 1,000 people died in an earthquake in AED. Such hazards cause a lot of losses, as in animal life, human life, agricultural infrastructures, and in houses. And in AD, we don't have enough, enough, plus, enough resources to build our resilience. As to the students' training awareness, education, simulation, your forum, schools play a critical part in the nation's future, future so, quality education can lead to a sustainable future. In AED, we do face also as major challenges waste management pollution, like soil pollution, water and food pollution, air pollution, marine pollution, gas, CO2, and deadly epidemics. Face this, this situation, in my school, College of Coplage, we practice waste recycling, we produce non polluting charcoal briquettes with、uh, papers. 
and also in the craft of non-degradable waste. We experience also renewable energy. Here, some students are learning to build solar power. We can use renewable energy to save our planet and to ensure strong economical systems. But in the whole country, a very little amount of schools has the resources to do such practices. If we join hands together, we can have an healthy, pleasant, and lively, and livable environment. This is the road to a sustainable future. Let's work on it. Thank you. Merci. Thank you very much, Tim Haley. 次は日本北海道チームによる5のプレゼンテーションです。発表の準備があるチームの方は移動してください。それ以外の方は発表者の準備ができるまで着席したままでお待ちください。
すいません時間調整のため少々お待ちください繰り返し放送します時間調整のため少々お待ちくださいできましたのでただいまから日本北海道チームによるプレゼン後を始めます日本北海道チームの皆さんお願いいたしますチーム北海道プレイスタート So we will begin our presentation first let us introduce our school Those are the system of Odori High School. Because of those systems, there are lots of minorities. Our aim is to live together with students and people outside of school. The topic for our presentation is Is sustainable urban development possible? We made Sapporo as one example. The topic for our presentation is We will introduce the present day Sapporo. Sapporo is the fifth biggest city in Japan. In 1972, the Sapporo Winter Olympics was held here. Because of that, Sapporo became modernized. Subways and railroads were built. Sapporo is becoming modernized quickly. But, but 150 years ago, Sapporo was a nature filled city. The spring water from rivers are called mem in the Ainu language. The people who used these mem were the Ainu people. Before, there were 13 mems. The Ainu people only used three mems. Those three places are Itote. Chijikokan and Shokubutsen. The Ainu is an indigenous people of Hokkaido. The population was about 25,000 people. They were hunters and gatherers. They used tree and animal skin for clothes. They ate fish, wild plants, and wild animals. Such as bears. They lived in harmony with the nature. We wanted to know about the landscape and the history of undeveloped Sapporo. We went to three places to find out. The first place is the Hokkaido Governor's Official Residence. There is a yard here. There is a human made man with the Ainu people use it. The Ainu people lived in a pit house. We saw the hole where the house was built. By visiting the residence, we understood the environment of the past. In the Botanical Garden of Hokkaido University, there is a mem. This mem is very big and it is believed that the Ainu people use this mem the most. The TV Tower is located in Odori Park. From the top, we can enjoy the 360 degree view of Sapporo. The layout of Sapporo City was made by Yoshitake Shima. He climbed a mountain, and from the top, 
he saw the view and planted the seed. We can see the view of Sapporo from the TV tower. Beside the TV tower, there's a big tree called Harunire. This tree is three years, 300 years old. Harunire is a tree that has seen the development of Sapporo. There's a project called Harunire Project. People in this project collect seeds and raise young plants. Seedings work to protect Harunire. They are acting by their own by their own will by their own will for a better society. We discuss about sustainable human development with students from four countries that came to our school. Those countries are Canada, Kenya, Denmark, and Kazakhstan. One of the one of the things we talk about was is sustainable human development possible or not? Canada said it is possible because society in general develops slowly, so there is no urgency. Kenya said it is possible because is there a will, there is a way. Denmark also said possible because little things are on uh, because little things are the important things. On the other hand, the reason why it's not possible uh, 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 wait. Denmark also said possible because little things are, impo are important things. On the other hand, the Denmark uh, Kazakhstan said the reason why it's not possible is because a lot of natural resources have been destroyed. The things that can uh, Hokkaido also say it's possible because new inventions and idea ideas are much are made, such as LED and solar panels. One, mm, yep. With this in mind, we thought about what we can do. Some ideas were, through the social network, we can spread ideas of sustainable development. In other words, educate the society. By this, we could show people how society can change in a good and positive way. In the environmental aspect, support the idea of recycling. Also, governments should set more specific goals and policies, and convince and encourage citizens to take an action. Just like we said earlier, the Japanese elm tree, Harunire, is a tree that grew together with Sapporo. It is a symbolic emblem of Sapporo's urban development. Harunire is said that it will only live for 50 more years. On November 4th, we planted a young Harunire tree with the four countries. We planted it as a reminder of sustainable urban development and as a memory of this event. Let's all think about what we can do to make a better society. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Team Hokkaido. ただいまから10時15分までの休憩時間になりますが、次の発表の準備のある方、お手洗いに立たれる方以外は、なるべく着席したままでお待ちください。隣に座っている生徒の皆さんと友情を深める時間にしてくださっても良いかと思います。次は、オマーン国チームによる6のプレゼンテーションです。